This PSA was brought to you by the Peter G Show. You may have second thoughts after this show. But don't drink the Foster. <laughs> We're really talented. We should get Oscar. <laughs> Just pick out a fucking car for Christ's sake. No, I'm more of high money than Peter. Yeah, I want. I want. Here's good. Here's good. Ah, yeah, yeah. Adam Perry. I need to get back in the genie bottle. <laughs> from Pennsylvania, you're on. He likes it. It's show time. That's right, it's showtime. God willing, we'll talk about that in a minute. Hey, everybody, my name is Peter G. I'm weird, I'm the white dude show host. Right here, every Wednesday, like clockwork, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. on the East Coast, right here, with or without problems. But then again, don't we all? But I love you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I swore that I was not going to talk about the technical issues I've been having because I thought that by today they were going to be long behind me. But I'm going to mention this because in the event things get weird, because that seems to be the word of the week, weird. That's the, uh, the, the catchphrase that's been fed to the media, weird. Things get weird. Show goes off the air, whatever. Because I've been having major issues for the... Tonight makes the eighth week. That's two months with a broadband provider who can't get their shit together. And uh, I thought we were cool. All day I'm watching this. I'm getting obsessed with this now. Last night, just freaking out. Babysitting everything. Making sure that I can provide you quality entertainment. That's right. Don't mention it. Anyway. So I'm watching it. I'm thinking, okay, maybe they were working on stuff last night because it was kind of late. I stay up late. I work late into the night. I'm a night owl. And then everything's going good today. Watching it because it's important to me because I want to make sure if I'm going to go through all this effort... And it's a lot. I want to make sure I can relay the message, good or bad. In fact, tonight, I'm sure I'm going to piss off a lot of people that I love very much. So, one one couple of little issues over a million good things. Okay? So, keep an open mind. But either way, I'm watching it. So, when I get down to this desk, I sit in here. You know, we strap in, wire up, buckle up, prep, run some things through my head, say a prayer. And then 10 minutes right before we're getting ready to start, everything goes dark. No connection. Now I'm livid. I know you can't tell because I'm a, a professional. But I'm inside, I'm screaming. I'm going, this better not screw up because I'm sick of it. And then I let it boot up. I gave it some time. It all came back. Let's cross our fingers. We can get through this next hour plus. But believe me, tomorrow, it's not going to be Peter Nice Guy when I get on the phone. I'm done. And then I'll start bad-mouthing these guys. They, I just don't understand it. This is a business. And I've hung in there because I had faith. It's like, how can you not fix stuff, stuff like this? This is, you know, I'm not the first one, right? Anyway, tonight we got a show. You know, I we, again, I, I, I'm sticking with the program of current events because there's a lot of current events going on. A lot. And, uh, you know, now we're switching. All of a sudden, there's a new flavor of the month right now for the uh, people that are in the Democratic, you know, side of things or think they're in the Democratic side of things. I beg to differ. I don't think there's anything Democratic about the Democratic Party anymore. And I, and I beg 
the, the, I beg of you to see through all this crap, to see that like things are not as they appear. They're not. It's you know I'd be right there with you. Be right there with you, but eh, they ain't looking right. Don't smell right. Don't feel right. It's not right. So I leave. I left. I left and went to the right. And if they screw up, I'm out of them too. I'm done. But the thing is, right now we got all this Kamala talk, Kamala talk. And uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love a lot of you people that are going to go friggin' Peter. What the hell is wrong with him? It's like, I don't think there's anything wrong with me. And I invite you to change my mind, but I am not with her. So tonight we're going to talk about that. I want you to stick with me through the end too, please, because I think I have a video that might really... I think I have a video that might really help you understand to make sense of what's going on instead of sticking with the party just because of the orange man. They've painted him to be this evil villain and all that. I'm not saying he's a great solution, but he's a way better solution. And I'm sorry, that's my... Uh, sorry, not sorry. How about that? Either way, that's what's going on tonight. But I'm going to talk about a couple of other things that are still in current events because there's so much. We are getting... There's so much crap... The toilet is overflowing. It's all crap. And that's where I need you guys to understand. It's all crap. You have to you have to decipher. You have to put your crap goggles on, hold your breath, and get through it. Because you have you just can't. It's crap. So stick with me tonight. It's gonna be another eventful evening. I tell you, I love you guys. I do. Let's take a drink. It's going to be one of those nights. Woo! Smooth. My voice is kind of raspy again. I don't know, these past few weeks. It's, uh, I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's the environment, all that stuff. But um, let's see what we got here. She's all, uh, hey, let's already, st let's start with, let's start with a, a comment already. I, I'm going to, I'm going off the, uh, because I can't help it. It's like Mark says she is not eligible to be president. She can only rise as far as VP according to the Constitution and the Supreme Court. Her parents are not American, born making her. Well, I don't know. They're burying that truth, aren't they? If that's the truth. Here's my problem. I hate the fact that she keeps calling herself black. Therefore, everybody's voting for a black woman. We'll talk about that, too. It's going to be all over the map tonight. It just it bugs the shit out of me because it's all about principle to me. Qualifications. Are you a you know, are you a world leader? Do you have the capability? Do you have that in you? And we've known she hasn't had it in her. And now all of a sudden everybody's like, "Oh, this is going to be wonderful." Joe was going to be wonderful, and then the next day all of a sudden Joe was not wonderful, and she knew it. And she knew all about it, and I've known it for years, and they've been keeping it. They fooled a lot of you. They didn't fool everyone. But I'd rather you come around sooner or later than never. And this is why I'm here. So love me or hate me, pay attention, all right? At least at least watch, listen, maybe learn. Or I might even open up the phones at the end of the day. If, if this thing will hold up, if the will, connection will hold up, we'll be, maybe I'll take some phone calls. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. See, I... I Skip the monologue, or very mono. Hope everybody's doing well. Is it hot enough for you? Most parts of the country, East Coast, getting a lot of rain from what I can see. Summer. It's summer. I um, I want to keep start bringing guests on again and everything, but I refuse to do that while I'm having these technical issues. Until I get two or three solid weeks that I know I don't have to worry about this crap anymore, I'm not going to waste a guest on on incompetence of a broadband corporation crossing my fingers we'll see we will see we will see we will see we will see sorry i just went back to church for a minute i hope you guys are sharing i hope you guys are please keep subscribing to my youtube channel please please i need it i need it 
I'm fighting all the, the demons, the algorithm gods. They've got it out for me. And I can prove that because every time I put up a short clip on like the tube or certain venues, even the talk, if it's got something to do with something they don't want to be seen, all of us, you know, it, it, don't tell me when you have thousands of damn subscribers or like. They just want, they just make sure it to where it's not going to be. Uh, it's really tough. So please. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Facebook. Facebook is strong. I, I thought it would be the biggest pain in the ass, and Facebook has been fairly kind to me, considering. I don't know whether, I don't know how I'm slipping by them, but but it's working. And I love you guys on Facebook that are supporting. But YouTube also, don't forget, life is busy. I know it's hard to sit and be dedicated to watch an hour plus show. I truly understand and I love you for it. But if you don't have time to watch, just take the Peter G Show on the road. Google Peter G Show podcast. That's right. Peter G Show podcast right here. You'll see this this picture right here. And you can listen to the show audio version. It's on 26 different platforms. Your uh, Apple podcast, your, you know, all, all the. Oh, look, I need to talk to you, sir. I want a phone call from you. Right there. I love you, too. That's why we need to talk. I want to talk to you on the phone been many years it's time anyway google podcasts you can listen to the show while you're working while you're working out while you're doing exercising all that stuff because you even know when you're at work you know you put an earbud in your ear we all know that work is boring just google peter g show podcast comes up on spotify and amazon music i mean all, all the all the hits with the kids and just listen to the show it's the next best thing to be in there i love when you watch because i'm i you know i show videos and some things i'm a very visual guy I'm a guy. I like video. I like TV. That's my goal. But in the meantime, anything's better than nothing. I promise you, you will get something out of this every time. Whether it's talking about losing a loved one or politics, which I never thought I'd be talking about, but we are in funky times, to dealing with addiction. I mean, things like anything. It's There's something in there for everybody. So come on. Pay attention. Tune in. Spread the word. The best thing you could do for me is share. All right? Please share. I love you, but you got to help me out because it is tough. It is really tough. But in the meantime, speaking of tough, I want to hear real quick from our my favorite friends over at Clean Star Products with their infamous money-saving fuel additive DX1 driver. It makes sense to save money. So, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back, and then we're going to get to the nitty-gritty, all right? Let us help you with the high price of fuel. Hello, I'm Ty Thompson at CleanStarProducts.com. We can optimize your engine, saving you money in gas. Here's how. Our program works the same with gasoline and diesel engines. Whether you're using a car pack or SUV pack, the instructions are the same. Add one bottle to your engine oil, and each time you change your oil, add one bottle to the fuel tank each and every fuel fill up. It's that easy. You get 10% fuel economy on average, lower emissions, and increased horsepower. DX1 sells for $2 an ounce, so for just a few dollars a fuel tank, you can optimize your engine, saving you money and gas. Come on, give it a try. It's the finest green grade oil in the world from a California environmental company. You're going to feel it when you drive. Order online today. We'll get it out right away. Cleanstarproducts.com slash shop. That's right, folks. Clean Star Products. All I can tell you is, as a fact checker, because I use the product, it works. It works. I drive a higher mileage vehicle. 
Notice the difference within about three tanks. Here's what you want to do. You want to go to www.cleanstarproducts.com. It was on the ad. Go watch the ad again because it actually played before we got cut. There's a phone number there. Call that number. Ty Thompson will speak to you personally to answer any of your questions. And should you decide to order, please, please, please mention that you saw it on the Peter G Show, right? Because here's why. If you say you saw it on the Peter G Show and you want to order some of this product to give it a try, say, I'd like to see if it works. He will send you five bottles for the price of four because you saw it on this show, right? That's right. Just tell him you saw it on the Peter G Show. You'll get five bottles for the price of four. A deal's a deal. I love them because they actually have a product that works. He's passionate about what he does, and they know what they're talking about. All right? It's that simple. So do it. Most of all, they know what I do. They've been putting up with this two months worth of infrastructure, broadband bullshit, and they still sponsor me. So God bless them. All right. Moving along. It's that time again. It's going to be that time big time. Oh, yeah. I know why people quit. <laughs> I really do. I really do. I'm just nuts. I'm nuts. This is like, I don't see, I don't see failure. I see a lot of ass aches, but I never see failure. As being a drummer, I was a fairly decent one. And I saw no reason why you can't be successful. I never saw like, oh, this isn't going to work. I mean, the music business has taken a really weird twist and turn. And I kind of, I didn't age out, but I had to take a good look. I mean, due to circumstances, this is how this show started with divorce and all that kind of crap. I had to make a choice, you know, that I had to raise my daughter. And that was super important to me. Although no matter how good you do, it's still questionable. But, uh, you know, you got to always be there and they're going to, they're going to stray. God knows I was a pain in the ass. I owe my mother and father everything. That's why I love them, miss them so much because they put up with my shit. But again, this is what brings me to this show. As you grow older, you change. Things change. And I brought all that experience to this show. I think I did. I think I did. You decide. But, um, I just know that there's stuff here that means a lot to a lot of people, that touches people. It touches more people than you know, in a good way, not in a JB sniff sniff kind of way. <laughs> and uh, I just, you know, I just, I'm just hell bent now on it's like, you know, I love playing music. I'm kind of busy right now. I don't have as much time as I used to, but I'll get back there again. But this show is important to me because I feel like I've, through all the crap of music and everything, I've been brought into this position to deliver a message. Some way, shape, or form, I'm here for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Hi, my name is Peter G. I love you. Moving along. All right, so here's what's going to happen. I have, um, let's let's go back to the Orange Man's uh, uh, assassination attempt, all right? Let me get back to where we're going. I hope this all hangs in there. The Orange Man's assassination attempt you know, this isn't the JFK era. I was that was 1963. I was like one and a half, something like that. And um, you know, there's too many cell phones, too many technologies. Like trying to do things, you can. You know, you. I, I'm so thankful. You see those memes. I hate memes. I love them. I hate them. About thank God there was no cell phones in the 80s because you know we'd be in so much trouble. That is a fact. <laughs> that is a fact. We did some, you know, gnarly shit. Nothing to hurt anybody, but the thing was, we'd be, we'd be getting busted a lot on a lot of stuff. Didn't hurt anybody. Still here to tell about it. But the thing is, there's too many cell phones, too many technology, everything. It's too much of everything. Trying to get away with an assassination attempt isn't like the old days, okay? It's not. And uh, I got a guy, he's a retired military 
sniper and he's a consultant and i don't know i, I he's been putting out a lot of videos he's gonna yeah, again I'm, I'm sick of like i don't believe that it that kid took this upon himself to try to take out the orange man all right plain and simple i'm telling you right now all right you got a problem with that call me talk to me email me info at petergshow.com you got a problem i'll bring you on the show but you better have your facts straight because no kid can do the pull this shit off it's just not doable it was inside they want him gone because he's gonna mess up their whole plan of just taking us down he's standing up for us I, I mean i mean i'm sure you know there's a certain limit but he's standing up for us and he took a bullet you can make believe that it was all set up and that wasn't a bullet and all that bullshit okay whatever you know they even we have the technology to slow down video they saw you saw the bullet speeding by there's i'm sure they saw all the other bullets too and they have confirmed that it wasn't i mean they haven't confirmed. They're never going to agree to it. But it's been confirmed that it wasn't that kid's bullet. There's somebody else doing this stuff. So check out this guy who's going to talk to you real quick about what happened a couple of weeks ago. Because it's important. This is stuff that goes is going down in our history. And believe me, it's not over. They're going to try again. Some way, shape, or form. Not necessarily the same way. But they want him gone because he's messing up everything they've worked hard to brainwash and take down this country and almost it's working but we're not gonna let that happen so check this guy out right 16 facts you need to know about the attempted assassination of donald trump number one there were 10 shots fired during the entire event number two shot number one grazed president trump's ear number three Shot two and three missed President Trump. Number four, there were two distinct volleys at two separate distances. Number five, volley number one consisted of three distinct shots at the same distance. Number six, volley number two consisted of five shots from a different distance. Number seven, Two shots were fired by Secret Service and local police and occurred last in the sequence. Number eight, the audio footprint of volley number one contained a muted footprint consistent with shots fired from indoors. Number nine, volley number two is consistent with shots being fired in open air. Number 10, volley number one was fired approximately 60 feet farther away than volley number two. Volley number one's firing pattern and rhythm is consistent with an experienced shooter. Number 12, volley number two's firing pattern and rhythm is consistent with an inexperienced shooter. Number 13, volley number one came from behind and above volley number two. Number 14, the degree of elevation of volley number one was approximately three degrees. Number 15, the known degree of elevation for volley number one is consistent with shots being fired from the rooftop. And number 16, it is scientifically impossible for the known degree of elevation to reach the water tower. And now you know. I'm just saying, this guy's an expert. He's got a bunch of videos out. I just happened to capture that one because they can figure it out. If you're, if you're, you know, they can figure it out. But the news, the news, and I'm telling you, left and right side, they're afraid to say that this was a inside deep state job. It's all getting ready to come out. Now there's a whistleblower. Somebody within the Secret Service is saying this isn't right. This is not right. There are people deep within that are all, you know, conspiracy. It's not a theory. It's a fact. This is the world we're living in. 
And that's why we can't let them get away with this. Because, see, what you don't understand is I don't care how bad you hate the orange man. If you, the, the fact that they're doing this stuff is going to affect you in the long run. If they take him out. I don't even want to know about what happens after that. <clears throat> but if, God forbid, they take him out. And you're going, oh, good, because I freaking couldn't stand him. Okay, that's great. We're next. Not not in the same sense, but then they have total control because he is the only one standing in the way. I mean, there's a bunch of other people behind him. But let's face it. He's got balls. You may not like his personality or whatever, but he's got balls. He knows they're going to try to take him out, and he still gets up there every single day. A lot of people would have called it quits. You know what? I don't need this. He's a freaking gazillionaire. He can go live a life on an island. He can go do whatever the hell he wants. And he's sticking. I mean, does that not tell you something? Uh, besides, you can say, oh, he's just egotistical and all that. It's like, okay, sure. I don't care how egotistical you want to be from your grave if they succeed. And believe me, they're not done. They may not try the same way. Could be poisoning. You heard Alex Jones last week. I played that video. I hope you watched last week's show. They're not done because... He's such a threat to them because he knows all kinds of stuff. He's in the in, in the know. And if you don't think he's got stuff going on behind the scenes, I mean, I got a lot of faith in him, and I hope he wipes them all out because it's for our good. He's doing more for us than you will ever know, and all you want to think is the bad orange man. And that's where the confusion starts. I'm, a lot of my friends are struggling hand to mouth, week to week, month to month. I'm I'm serious, and they they they've fallen into the the. We want somebody more presidential, more eloquent, and all that. It's like you know he knows, and business is tough. It's a tough business. He knows. I say screw that. Let him be a bull in a china a shop. We need that right now. We really need a cleansing, a purge. The whole system is screwed and corrupt. Period. Period. And if you think they're working for us, God bless you. God bless you. They're not. They don't care about us. They care about them. We're worker bees. You understand that? It's only going to get worse. Only going to get worse. All right. So anyway, so uh, I just wanted you to know about they know what's going on with that whole attempt to assassinate him. Everybody knows. If this guy knows, everybody knows. And uh, it's not going to get go away anytime soon. They're going to get to the bottom of it, whether he's here with us or not. If they succeed, we're still going to it's not going to be like the JFK days. It's just not. And, you know, you ever wonder why they won't release the true transcripts of the JFK, because it's all inside stuff. All inside stuff. It needs to be seen and heard on how corrupt of a country we're living in. You know, this is where they're working for us. It's farthest from the truth. Anyway, moving right along, I want to talk to you about um, this whole, every week, there's something going on with catchphrases. The media, the, I don't know how they do it, but for the whole propaganda media, I told you, I don't believe anybody in the media. I mean, there's a few good ones, but I question everything, as opposed to a lot of you who believe everything they say because they're the media. Years ago, that was kind of true. No longer. It's a big stage show. I can't say it enough, and I wish you people would just come around and figure it out. Maybe you will. I hope you will, but I'll keep trying to pound it down. And I know it's not good if you're shoving stuff down somebody's throat. You know, you drip on them gently. I don't have time for gently. We're in a big mess here. So love me or hate me. Piss you off or or strike a nerve and pay attention. One way or the other. Told to me by close people in my circle, in my camp, everybody's on their own journey. And certain people are going to go run off the cliff with the rest of them. And some people are going to survive. That simple. If you think I'm wrong, please, I, I invite you to come and tell me how. Put you on the show. I'll let you call in. Comment, and I'll, I'll, I'll turn the phones on. I'll let you talk about it, all right, if you think I'm wrong, which I know a lot of you do think of it, but not as many as the ones who understand what's going on. 
Anyway, the whole catchphrase this week, and I noticed this a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, it's like all of a sudden there's this word, and then th this this system is is using this word, and then this system, this news company is 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 uh, talking about a certain word, and they're all using it. You know, who cares about you changing your mind? Your name is not Joe Biden. Let me put this up here because I'm not sure what I'm reading. Who cares about you changing your mind? If your name is not Joe Biden, you can do nothing to stop her from becoming president. Yeah, change my mind. You know what? I'll put a phone number up. You can you can call me. All of a sudden, she went from nothing to God bless her. She didn't get one friggin' vote in her primaries four years ago. Not one, Janice. And again, I'm not here to argue with you because you, you're probably a good person. But I, I just disagree with you. I just do. And I appreciate you watching. I do. And I'll give you an opportunity. Stay on the show. I'll open up the phone lines and you can call in, Janice. And you can tell me how she's so friggin' brilliant that she deserves to be president. On, on on the things and please stick with the show because I'm getting ready to start showing a few things and and it's a plethora I can only do a couple but believe me through the weeks I'll be doing more because I love you because I want I, I want to understand I do and if I'm wrong I will tell you and I will join you in your fight but right now I think it's you're you're delusional I'm sorry <laughs> becoming president the only way she's going to become president is if is unless they cheat big time. Watch the rallies, see who shows up for hers, see how many people show up for Trump. I mean, to go out of people's way. I mean, it's been going on. I don't even want to go into it. You know it. I know it. But you just, I don't know what your deal is. But I, I'll, I'm open to hearing you out. I am. I am because I realize that in life. This is just a couple of little indifferences. We don't all have to agree on everything. You have every right to believe in. Her. You have every right. That's your freedom of the United States. But I'm here to tell you, I don't. It's that simple. So stick with me. Because I'll still love you, whether we agree or disagree. I'm not a hater. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. She went from supporting Joey sharp as a tack to the next day, there's something wrong with him. She's been covering up this shit for, for years. He was never attack sharp as attack not since he became president and he's never really done anything for this country but they hate the orange man and you gotta admit you i bet you hate the orange man that's why you support it you don't care it's any who any blue but but the you know how's it go any blue will do i said that last week i don't even remember because it's so stupid in my opinion but anyway stick with me janice i love you because we'll get this out of the way and there's way more stuff that we probably, you know, in life that we agree on than, than this. But this is important. So where was I? Uh, let's go back. She's going to be president. Oh, I got to stop that. I got to take that off. That's not even worth worth putting up. Uh, oops. No, we don't want that. Where the hell are you? Oh, comments. I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind now because it just it just blows my mind. Okay, let's get back in the groove here. I'd like to thank the internet for keeping me on and not booting me off. And if it does, the haters will go, see, that's because you suck, Peter. <laughs> you get what you deserve. That's the internet gods kicking you off because you're sending a message that people don't want to hear. I don't know. Let's let the people decide, right? That's the problem. I'm sick of this, uh, all this, uh, you know, everybody getting silenced and not being able to say what they want to say. So that way you can be heard. All right, so here we go. So the weird stuff. Let's go with the weird stuff real quick, because th this every week a different catchphrase, where they jump from he's Hitler to to he's weird. And, you know, it's like, okay, weird. Sure, great. Here we go. Uh, you know, I'm I'm weird too. You know, we're all weird. In fact, I had a, what was his name? Frankie Russo. I had a, a uh, motivational speaker on. He just wrote a book, Embracing Your Weird. It's like, Weird, you know, the, all the little kinks that make you who you are is what makes you who you are. But then again, they're not really going for that. They're just trying. Uh, I don't know what they're trying for. There's, they, they, they got nothing. 
you got nothing. So you're going for whatever you're grabbing straws, as I said. So check out this little thing. This is from uh, Tim Kramer. He's been on the show, and he definitely, he's not weird. He's common sensible. But check it out. And now another lesson in how Operation Mockingbird is still in effect. Today's word of the day, weird. Some of what he and his running mate are saying, well, it's just plain weird. <laughs> These guys are just weird. That's where they are. Uh, as weird and creepy uh, as J.D. Vance. A super weird idea from J.D. Vance. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's quite weird. They're just plain weird. Just plain weird. Just plain weird. That stuff is weird. They come across weird, and then they start being weird. Yeah, they're weird. Being a really weird. He's such a weirdo. Donald Trump and his weirdo running mate are weird. Deeply and profoundly weird. They are weird. These Republicans just being weird. It's just weird. It's really weird. Republican weirdness goes even deeper. He said a lot of things that are weird, a weird style that he brings, weird policies. We'll start with, with the weird thing, because it is a thing. Just plain weird. What was weird was his talking about Diet Mountain Dew. Who, who drinks Diet Mountain Dew? Have you ever seen the guy laugh? That seems very weird to me that, a, that an adult can go through six and a half years of being in the public eye. If he has laughed, it's at someone, not with someone. That, that is weird behavior. Weird and cultish. These are weird people on the other side. He kind of doubled down on his weird ideas. I think weird is probably generous. Simply weird. These guys are just plain weird. Vance as weird? You know, as the campaign said, weird. It really is just plain weird. Shady Vance, plain weird. No, I mean, I don't know how else you can read it. Weird. It is kind of weird. We're not afraid of weird people. The other side, they're just weird why are you being so weird vance has done something more extreme more weird no matter what kind of weird stuff they keep saying trump and vance are just weird in addition <laughs> to being dangerous to democracy that's the weird part that's the most engaging whom he addressed as my beautiful christians which was super weird weird tech bro jd vance he's a weird guy jd vance uneasy and sort of weird frankly for lack of a better word that he's weird sarcastic remarks that aren't even funny and he kind of shows that he can't really deliver a one-liner so sam weird is the word here uh in terms of initial impressions from vance uh to the right. american public yeah see the, the, and I, they, it moves like within minutes. They they put it out there on the API, or how, I don't know how they do it nowadays. But all of a sudden, it's like they feed everybody. Go from for today, you're gonna. This is gonna be your key word. Weird. You know what's weird? This current administration over the past four years, the people they have employed and 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 uh, and stood behind to and promoted in the White House. This is weird right here. Okay, this is all weird. This shit. Has never happened. All this stuff, topless, transgender uh, people uh, on the White House lawn. We have an admiral, Admiral Muckenfutch, whatever the hell his name is, uh, and the dude who was stealing laundry—I mean, suitcases—from the airport. He was in charge of nuclear waste. They hired him. It's just that's weird, okay? When you're saying that we're weird, that's weird. I can accept it, but not in government, unless you're qualified to do your job. But none of them are. They just keep doing this uh, this DEI hire bullshit. DEI hire. It's bullshit. It's all bullshit. You're not qualified. You don't get the job. I don't care what color, race, gender you are. I am the farthest from who cares. You could be the gayest guy on the planet. I don't care. If you can do the job, I'm in. I want somebody really good in my circle. And they're hiring all these, all these. It's a circus. It's a friggin' circus. And you you accept it. Ah. Oh, we're the first to put this kind of a person in place, even though they suck. Get somebody qualified. I'm in. But they don't. And you just keep on accepting it. You keep accepting it. Because anybody but the orange man, you're you're, you're going to take this ship. This whole administration has been a, just a blunder, a blunder. But it's like they keep lying to you and you keep, you know it. Who, who told me that? They said, uh, they keep on feeding you shit. And, but yet you've convinced yourself it tastes like caviar. And you keep eating it. Because anything but the orange man, I don't get it. Change my mind. Anyway, let's move forward. Okay, so now let's get into 
Kamala, Kamala, Kamala Harris. Kamala, Kamala. She's no good. I gotta work. I, <laughs> I didn't think I could do an orange man, but I'm gonna work, start working on it. Anyway, um, let's go. Here's the beauty of what's gonna, what's about to start coming up. Video, video, don't lie. She's on tons of video through the years, stating her, her um, policies. She's a radical. She ruined California and the judicial system. I'm not even going to talk about her sexual escapades getting up to how she got up to. I don't care. But she's not qualified. And she's got this radical ideology that just, it ruined California. And she's getting ready to ruin the, the rest of the United States if given the chance. We're not going to have it. Not going to have it. And the beauty of it is there's tons of video. She's done nothing to help anything. Anything. She was named, while she's vice president, the borders are. Joe told her, you're going to be in charge of the border. What has she done for the border? Let me help you out. Nothing. It's running rabid. We have almost 20 million people in this country. Killers. People. Sure, there's a few good ones. But tell that to the people who have gotten lost their family to murderers this is not they've dumped out their jails in venezuela i'm not going to be the one to tell you this let's get it straight from the horse's mouth okay but this is on this administration's watch and this is on a current vice president who wants to be your president she's done nothing 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 change my mind nothing nothing just sickening. It's sickening. I want you to check out this video. This is Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil talking to somebody within the government, within the government agencies, retired, or, and, and they know how bad it is, and this administration has done nothing. And it's all fine and dandy until it starts affecting you, and it will. You can't have 20 million people in this country, terrorists, just walking on over the border, no problem, until something bad goes down. It's going to affect a lot of people. You better cross your fingers. It's not you for sticking up for it because it's going to bite you right in the ass. Check this out. Nice little video. Truth. Venezuela, by the way, has the lowest murder rate ever right now. What does that tell you? Yeah, all the murderers are gone. They're here. Yeah. So is it true that they're empty in prisons? I mean, is this, this is not, Cuba this is, all over this again? Is not, this is not a hearsay. There was a memo by DHS last year admitting that in fact they knew that Venezuela's government was emptying their prison and rehabilitation centers or drug centers, releasing them on purpose because they knew with instructions to make, if you were going to get out, you're going to make your way to the U.S. That is not, we're not making that up. That, 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 that's true. It was, it was reported on and DHS admitted that that was happening. And in fact, it has. El Tren de Aragua is heavily present in our country now. Okay, so you're telling me that DHS has acknowledged that Venezuela, for example, is empty in their prisons and their rehabilitation centers with the understanding you get out if you leave here and go to the United States. Yes. And DHS has, in writing, said, we know that's happening. We know they're coming here. We're processing them in and have no idea where they are. Correct. How many people are we talking about? Millions. And just Venezuela alone. We're talking about in the last two or three years, we've had estimated how many people have come across the border. My estimation, the the official number, I think, is about to hit 10 million. Yeah, it's about but, 10, 10, 11 million. Yeah, yeah, my, that's the official. But my personal opinion, I think we're at about 15 to 18 million. Do you think this is like they're, they're lying? Do your homework. Go talk to people in the southern borders. Research. Nobody does. Again, if it doesn't affect you, it is. They're all migrating all over the place. They're setting up. They're infiltrating the whole country. The, again, the cartels, they, they got, they just have a grip. They are killing it. 
They're making more money than they ever have on just human trafficking alone, getting people across the border, paying thousands apiece. This is all on her watch, your current VP, because she was in charge of this stuff. But that's what they want. They want everybody because they love Joe Biden. That's all they want them to know because they want to make them voters. They want to make them voters because they're losing their grip. The Democratic Party has gone to shit and they're losing their grip. And you know why they're losing their grip? Because they've gone off the rails. It's like, keep your shit together and let's let's be the Democratic Party that used to be. And I'm in. But you're not. You're not. They've got crazy ideas. Crazy ideas. All you people scared about this Project 2025 bullshit that has nothing to do with anything. They, the Democratic Party sho- shoving that down your throat to give you fear tactics. Propaganda. Your own party is the one you need to be afraid of, people. They're the ones. I'm telling you. You think the American people are that stupid? Most people aren't. But there's that few, that chosen few, that's still going to stick with it till death do us part. Careful what you wish for. Because the law of averages might catch up with you. Wrong place, wrong time. They've All these criminals, they just got rid of them all. They go, you know what? We're going to let you out of jail. You got to go to America. Lucky us. It's like having rats. They're multiplying. Now, good luck trying to get rid of them. You don't feel them until they get into your house. But what do I know? Again, more about Kamala Harris. Here's a guy who's going to talk about CNN starting to turn a little bit because they know that they're losing the fight. You know, CNN, as far as I'm concerned, them and MSNBC are the worst of the worst. With Morning Joe and all these bullshitters getting paid all this money to just lie. And having the the guts to to live with themselves, telling all the crap they're, they're, they're spewing. And you get up every day and you watch them and you believe them. I'm telling you, stop it. Even Fox News, uh, you know... I take them with a grain of salt. They're not specifically talking about things that they should say. Everybody's sitting on the fence, playing around. It's bullshit. Stop it. Your eyes, your ears, your wallet, your senses should know this stuff. Figure it out. If not, that's why I'm here. And I don't care if you start calling me names or whatever, but change my mind. Tell me I'm wrong. But I'm going to tell you right now, even CNN is starting to turn. They were turning on old Joe, which they loved him. All of a sudden, he became, you know, something's wrong. And they stabbed everybody, stabbed him right in the back. How quickly he went away from being the sharpest tack in the in the toolbox. You know, he's he does more in a couple of hours than most people do all day. We knew this was crap. We knew this was crap. I see it. See, I pay more attention because it's kind of my job, you know, and I understand why some people don't. But I'm here to tell you, you need to pay attention because you're going to be making a huge mistake. It's going to cost you even more, as if it hasn't been costing you already. The fact that you chose to believe that we're doing better keeps you hanging in there for hope. I hopes and dreams, as somebody once told me. Hopes and dreams. Fact is fact. So here's a guy talking about CNN and how they've pretty much Throwing everything under the bus, so check this out. This is CNN, all right? Holy smokes, did CNN just stumble into one of the most epic fact checks against the Kamala Harris campaign? You gotta see this, this is epic. For several weeks now, I've been telling you about the propaganda campaign around Project 2025, going all the way back to Democracy Forward, the People's Guide to Project 2025, Mark Elias, Ron Klain, all of the usual actors that develop propaganda and drive the campaigns for the radical left in the Democrat Party. And CNN just exposed it. For the life of me, I can't figure out why they did this. CNN fact-checking the Kamala Harris campaign? Holy smokes. It's possible that they don't even know what they just did. Because if you notice the headline, what they're fact-checking is one claim. One claim that Kamala Harris made about Project 2025 as she tried to inaccurately, well, really, just she lied, about Project 2025 and Social Security cuts. And it's quite possible that Daniel Dale just doesn't know what he did. So read the highlighted part. It says the Harris campaign official said the campaign has, quote, 
made a deliberate decision to brand all of Trump's policies as Project 2025. And the reason? Because they believe it has stuck with voters. That's the wrap-up smear. That's how they do it. The Democrat Party created a propaganda campaign around something that was totally unrelated to Donald Trump and his campaign. And then they sent the media out and all their left-wing organizations out to convince people that Donald Trump had something to do with Propaganda 2025. And now suddenly, CNN inadvertently fact-checked them? Wow. Somebody must be out for Kamala Harris and her campaign. Maybe she's not the one that's going to be the nominee. Yeah. Because believe me, I'm positive they don't want her to be the nominee. I am beyond positive. But they had to put her up there until they figure out a plan how to get rid of her too although she can read a teleprompter better than old joe did and that's all they really want is they want a puppet because there's so many people in the background that we don't know who they are world leaders self-appointed anointed leaders and they want somebody to just tell what to say a figurehead but that's not what this country is all about if that was the case, it's like that's a news reporter, a news anchor. We don't need a president. What good's a president if they're not really president? They're just a figurehead. It's stupid. Think about it, people. You've lost your way. Think about it. That's not what it's about. Now, every president has advisors and things like that. But at the end of the day, the president's the president. Now they're just puppets. And you know, the sad part is, the whole world is knowing this. I said this last week, and boy, a bunch of people didn't know which way to take it. I, but the whole world is looking at us. It's so not what we were about. And they're calling us a clown show. And when I say clown show, they weren't talking about the orange man. I mean, he's got a part in it because it's all part of the whole thing. But our current minister, it's just a circus. It's they're stepping back. They change their minds every week. They change the story. They fill you with more crap every week. And it's like, no, remember I told you red was the color? No, no. This week, yellow is the color. You got to go with yellow. And you believe it. Stop. D doesn't this make sense by now? Even though you hate the orange man, you want you don't, you know, you want to stick with your party. I know deep down there's gotta be. There's gotta be a party you're going. This is really not feeling right, but I'm not letting go. Letting go is the sensible thing to do. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, smells like a duck, swims like a duck, it's a friggin' duck. But you won't because you hate. They told you to hate the orange man. Again, stick with me till the end of this show. I think I have a video that will help satisfy your need of common sense. Common sense. I've been saying that this whole sh my whole show revolves around common sense. Stupidity and fun is one thing, but common sense is the anchor of this show. I stick by that. Change my mind. Ooh. Here's another one. This is from uh, our current VP's past about transgender uh, surgeries for prison inmates. The taxpayer paying for it. More stupidity. But I just got to bring this by because like... Let me play the video first and then we'll talk about it. All right, here, check this out. When I was attorney general, I learned that the California Department of Corrections, which was a client of mine, I didn't get to choose my clients. Right. A client of the attorney general. A client of the attorney general, right. of the office of attorney general. That they were standing in the way of, of, of surgery. Um, for prisoners. Uh, for prisoners. And there was a specific case. And when I learned about the case, I worked behind the scenes to not only make sure that that transgender woman got the services she was deserving. So it wasn't only about that case. I made sure that they changed the policy in the state of California. So that every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access to the medical care.
that they desired and need. And I believe it was not only, I know it was historic in California, but I believe actually it may have been one of the first, if not the first in the country, where I pushed for that policy in a Department of Corrections. So she's bragging about how she is pushing or pushed to give every prisoner who's transgender the right to have surgeries in prison on the taxpayer's dollars. They're in friggin' prison and you're wanting to pay bad enough. We got to pay for their friggin' health care and their food and everything else, but we got to pay for some transgender person in prison where a person, if a true transgender is not in prison has to pay out of their own pocket, but we're going to support and pay out of taxpayer dollars, some transgender person, however many they may be to get surgeries complimentary of the U S citizen taxpayer. Stupidity runs rapid. If as if there's not more important things to worry about, she's focused on that. And this is just the beginning people. She's a radical Marxist. She talks about, uh, not equality, equity, equity. There's a difference. She talks about equity in the United States. She's truly talking about this stuff now. Equity is means that if you worked your butt off, let's say you own a restaurant, you're working your butt off and you become semi-successful or you're able to support yourself. And there's somebody else sitting on the couch, drinking beer and doing drugs in your, in, in your area that they should be equal to you regardless. So you're getting up and you work 18 hour days, 15, 17 hour days. I know how the restaurant business is. You're married to it, but you love it or you do it and you support your family. But there's all these people that just do nothing. They do nothing and expect something. She's wanting to keep, like everybody equal across the board. Not that you don't deserve it, but regardless of whether you deserve it or not, you're going to get it. So this guy is busting his butt. He's going to lose money to support these people who are just expecting it. That's what she wants to do. Equity, not equality, not give you the chance to better yourself. That's equality. Like given the chance which I think we pretty much have a lot of that nowadays. I really do. I do. Equity. Lazy ass people who think of a million things they want to do, but they never get off the couch. So the wealthy people who busted their butt were continually getting up every day and making things happen have to sacrifice and give up their wealth or everything they're working for to support these people who do nothing. So then here's the problem. What's the incentive? There is none. So the people who are busting their butt eventually are going to say, why am I busting my butt? Why am I doing this all day? I have nothing because it's all going to these people who are doing nothing. So then all of a sudden the standards of our sustainability and our quality of life goes down. It's going to go down to like minimal third world country type shit because then the government's going to subsidize. They throw you a crumb to keep you alive, to keep things going. But you are totally, you know, at the mercy of the government because the people who are busting their butts going, there's no sense in busting my butt. Why should I bust my butt when these people are getting everything that I'm working for for free? It just makes sense. And then all of a sudden you become... What's called, oh, what's that word? It's right here. Communist. It's a communist society. That's how it works. The government just keeps you alive. You're alive, but you can have nothing. 
nothing you don't have the opportunity anymore to become better than somebody else based on your efforts like how i mean how does that make sense how does that make sense just like me this show i could do nothing or i could i could put in half the effort i, I mean regardless of the effort i put into what comes out of it i don't know i get up every day striving because uh, i have a, a vision i keep pushing forward and i don't let up even though it costs me dearly in a lot of ways but i love it i love what i do i want to bring this to you i feel i have a vision not and this is nothing i mean to me if i had the budget it'd be a different show but it'd be not only entertaining but it'd be something you go i don't mind watching that guy Right now, with all that's going on, I'm just sitting around here trying to bring things to your attention. But then again, it's all about life. This is the life we're living right now, and it's super important. But if I was getting a check from the government, why would I want to get off my ass? It's like, I'm just getting a check and shoot you. Because, I mean, I put in, I don't even know. I quit counting with the hours I put in for this kind of stuff. I quit looking at it because it'll drive you crazy. I know why people give up. Not this guy. Hi, my name is Peter. You get my drift? She's supporting just crap. This is what she stands for. And she's going to be a world leader? Then again, all she has to do is read a teleprompter. That's all they want is a puppet. Just don't make no waves. Read what's on there and shut up. She'd be perfect for that. But we can't allow that because that's dangerous. It's dangerous. Here. Here's for, you know, I, I I don't want to start talking about color and, and all that kind of stuff. But the truth is the truth. I don't care about color. I love all. I love all. Common sense. But for you, you know, black folk wanting to hear it from your own people, which are all my people. I'm black. I'm everything. I'm Greek, but I'm, you know, we're all in this together. But here's one woman that has some common sense and she's trying to talk to you to stop buying into the bullshit for a sandwich. All right, check it out. Black folks, every time I turn around, I just get more and more sick of y'all. What in the hell are y'all celebrating? Y'all haven't seen Camilla this entire time. Camilla did the same exact thing the average nigga do when they know they're about to need you. Figure out a way to get in contact with you. She threw up a barbecue. Niggas been getting tricked for years with food. She allowed y'all to drink up all the check sodas that y'all wanted and take all the pictures with her that y'all wanted, showing nothing but gums and teeth. Half of the photos that y'all was able to take with this woman, this woman wouldn't have dare been captured in a photo with half of y'all if she didn't need you. She wouldn't dare be even caught standing beside some of y'all if she didn't need you. And y'all celebrating because she was able to raise up millions of dollars in 24 hours? When we got sisters and brothers out here in the world can barely provide food on the table for their families. People out here in the world hurting and y'all in celebration mode over this fuckery. Honestly, I think the best thing for all of us to do is do like our grandparents taught us. Stop tending to other people's house and worry about our own house. Some of y'all are too focused on the White House. In fact, some of y'all are just entirely too grown. You actually seen plenty of presidents make it in and out the White House with absolutely no change being made after they depart. So I don't know why some of y'all grown ass is celebrating like y'all doing. You should be crying. You should be actually focused more on your finances because by now you should know that all of this shit is about money. And if you ain't got none, you don't even matter. Your vote don't even matter. Your opinion don't even matter. Your celebration don't even matter. <laughs> and let's just all stop deeming people to be the best fit for us just because we simply share the same skin color as them. That's the truth. That's the damn truth. I mean, I, I can't say it enough. Lonnie. If you're voting for this woman... Or, or she's not even been nominated yet, so I don't want to say it. But if 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 she uh, theoretically, because right now, for you know, who knows? Next week, tomorrow, things are changing every day. They keep on pulling more shit out their ass. 
They've got nothing. When you have nothing, you're grabbing straws. Glad you're still up, Lonnie. Let me talk about that. Yeah. Lonnie says Pensacola in the house. I love Pensacola. I love the Gulf Coast. I really do. Thank you, bro. But the problem I have is a lot of people, this is the mentality. I mean, I remember, I remember my father, like, yeah, I remember uh, Dukakis. Uh, he was a Democrat and he was running for president. And my father was like, this is many, many years ago. I was, it's probably in the early 80s, late 70s. It's like, he's Greek. He's Greek. So because he's Greek, you're going to vote for him because he's freaking Greek. He could be a Greek asshole. But I'm not going to, you know, but, but because he's Greek and I'm Greek, I'm going to support him, even though he's an asshole. It's like, I don't know. That's not me. I don't want an asshole in office. So if you're going to vote for a black woman and she's not even black, and I, why don't you call her out on this? She's not friggin' black people. She's Indian and Jamaican. She's not black. Why do we have to keep saying she's black? She's not. I mean, we shouldn't have to say anything about anything. It doesn't matter. You want somebody who's qualified. And she, I don't think she should be in the know now because now was just then. Not now. Just made that up. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but all these people, I've seen a lot of these these like dumb interviews where people go out on the streets, like in New York, and they go, "Why do you want to vote for for Kamala Harris? Because she's she'll be the first woman president, and then she'll be the first black woman president." It's like whoop de friggin' do if she sucks. If that's all your qualifications are, and believe me, many of these people, they know nothing about her. You know nothing about her. Even my, my new friend Janice, I dare say, you're going to have to come on the show and talk to me, whether it's phone call or come on the show, and tell me about her qualifications. Besides, she's a Democrat, and she just stabbed Joe in the back, and they had to put her in because she's the vice president. If they didn't, there's going to be all this bullshit, which I wouldn't even care. It's like, you ain't qualified. But then again, how can you say she's not qualified if she's qualified supposedly to be the vice president of the United States, which she's not. She's not. It's all the DI, DEI hiring, all at that level, which is sickening. It's the stupidest thing. Our own government put in bullshit, but that's part of the plan. We got dummies. They're just puppets. And you buy into it. Not everybody. And again, I'm not going to dislike you for it. I'm hoping that you're going to go, I need to pay attention more. I need to look into this more so I can either call Peter a friggin', you know, idiot or go, thank you, Peter. I don't know why, but it never occurred to me because I was so fixated on their programming of making me hate the orange man. Orange man bad. He's not as bad as you think. Rough around the edges, but that's business. He's just a business guy. And, you know, they just don't, they, 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 the first for the first time, he's not being political, telling you everything you want to hear. And that's the problem. He doesn't tell you everything you want to hear. You got to suck it up. It's real life. The politicians keep on saying everything you want to hear, fix nothing over decades. We'll get into that. Stay till the end. I'm telling you, you need to watch this last video at the end. This is what I'm talking about. So if you are one of those people who are, just pro Kamala Harris because she's a woman. And God, that'd be so exciting to have the very first woman, black woman president. There's nothing exciting about it. You're, you're committing suicide. She doesn't belong there. Somebody might. I'll tell you what, Candace Owens, that's a smart black woman. Smart, gutsy. I'd put her in any day because she has common sense. Back to the common sense. She's friggin' awesome. And she don't take no crap. But that is not gonna happen. Why? Because she's got common sense and she don't take no crap. They want puppets nowadays. 
just somebody to put up there. She's not even. I tell you, your 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 proposal for you know president and your Kamala. I'm with her. She's not even that good. And watch, it's all going to come out. The more we see of her, the more it's going to come out. And I can't wait. I can't wait. I don't know. I used to see. I saw some people like you know if she debates the orange man, she's going to mop the floor with them. It's like. Only in your psychotic, delusional world. She's not smart enough. I don't care if she was a prosecutor or, you know, eternal, uh, attorney general of California. Doesn't matter. She doesn't have what it takes. She doesn't. So prove me wrong. Change my mind. Next. Now let's have a little fun. Let's have a little fun. I'm going to prove you how ever since this administration has gotten into office... Everything is fake, phony, fake, phony. I remember when they when they won the election. They have a picture. They have a video of Kamala answering the phone, and Joe Biden's on the other line. She says, "We did it, Joe. We did it." And you know, it's like supposed to be this spontaneous, spontaneity of the the call. Just happens to be a camera, and you know, and they're just filming. It's all stage bullshit. The biggest bullshit. It's, there's been no more bullshit. There's always been bullshit in government, but it's been it's been the worst cast of of players, of actors in this bullshit. It's the craziest, and some of you just seem to want to still accept it for the sake of the party. Give me a hug. Stop. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. Change my mind. If I'm wrong, I'll say I was wrong. Wow, you really opened my eyes. You opened my eyes. Thank you, whoever you may be, which I doubt. So here's the original. Just so, just recently, just recently when uh when she you know got thrown. We by the way, no primaries. By the way, guys, what about democracy? About picking your electoral uh candidate? She just got by default. They just put her in there, and you accept it. It's like she's next. Joe's out because the 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 plot was foiled. Some of you figured it out, <laughs> although we all knew, we all knew. But the thing was that he got exposed to like his, you know, he's just not there. Age people age differently. He's not there. He wasn't good anyway. He's never done nothing, and he's been the luckiest guy in government. Period. That's where that should be on his epitaph. The luckiest guy in government. He's gone more places for doing nothing. And except lining his pocket and his family's pockets. But either way, what do I know? So they get a call. So they, they show this call on the, this is all last week about Obama finally coming around. I'm sure he's spinning around, hating what he's having to do and calling to congratulate Kamala on uh, being uh, the front runner for president. And, uh, and it just kills me because I know that that he's probably sick of all this because it ain't going the way he wants it to go you know all the string pullers it's not working how he wants to go but i want to show you a real quick clip of of the original uh of her and it's not the whole clip just a clip to show you how like oh she just happens to pick up the phone it just happens to be a camera there the audio from both sides of the phone is amazingly excellent so it's not staged or nothing like that it just happened to happen naturally right here check this out come along Hello. Hi. Hey there. Oh, hi, you're both together. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election and, and into the Oval Office. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. There's a part of me that doesn't even seem she's going to make it to the actual convention. They're going to come up with something else. But that was just a taste. I was like, hey, Kamala, it's, it's Obama. Yeah, and, Mich and Big Mike. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, so what you didn't see is, and this is a, this is the closest I could find of a, a BTS behind the scenes. This is how it really worked out. And I like this girl. She uh, she has a good, she does a decent Kamala. But this is how it really worked out as they were working it out, going, we need to put a phone call together. We need to make it, you know, out, put it out there that you're congratulating me and all this crap. This is, again, so much bullshit. So much bullshit. The bullshit. I'm going to have to get, I got like, you know, rubber boots, but I'm going to have to get waders up to here. It's getting so deep. 
but check it out. So this is the real how a, a, a depleted version of like how it really went down trying to put this phone call together. I hope you enjoy this because I certainly did. All right. Let me know when, when to start. Now? Hi, Michelle and Barack. Do it, do it again? Okay. Well, look who it is. It's Big Mike and Barack. <laughs> oh, crap. All right. Uh, take 49. Oh, thank you so much. And, you know, your endorsement means so much to me. Even though I didn't have it the first time. Yes, the time to act is now. Now is the time to act. And I will be doing what we promised we will be doing. And that time is every day. Doing what we had to cut. They said to cut. I was trying something different from unburdening what has been. That was your direction. I think the American people are coming around to it. <laughs> Michelle, this is the 73rd take. All right. I'll have to get off my feet. You know, my knees are killing me. They're working knees, you know. <laughs> it is my honor to receive your endorsement. I consider you both great friends. You have taught myself and Joe everything that we need to know about transparency. And I will lead with full transparency in this presidential campaign. <laughs> Cut. Yeah, we got it. That's a wrap, folks. <laughs> That's pretty much how it was probably conceived. Just a rendition, a you know, of of how. Cause all bullshit. It's all bullshit. But you want to believe so badly. You're dying. You're desperate because you you don't want to stop. Change is good. Time to just let go of the bad boyfriend or girlfriend, whichever you prefer so anyway so here's another depiction from uh she's on tiktok by the way i think it's uh mama mommy m 88 or something like that's right there you can see it she she's been doing this for a while i guess she's got a new job for at least a few more months <laughs> but but uh this is a this is a you know a, a depiction because i don't have one on 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 if Kamala was putting together her acceptance speech, I like having a little bit of fun too because it's funny, because it's true. You know, life, truth, common sense. But check this out. This is, uh, this would, she's working on her acceptance speech, and, uh, you know, you decide, good or bad. Well, well, well. <laughs> you know, I knew this day would come. I knew it would come, you know, and I felt it in my ovaries, and I'll tell you something. I didn't think that sticking all those needles in that Biden doll would help, but here I am. <laughs> We're going to have so much fun. Now, I've been a little busy since the news broke, and, you know, I was galvanizing with many donors. And I asked my good friend, Jean-Claude Van Dampier, to help me with my acceptance speech. So, here goes nothing. <sighs> oh, say can you see. Okay. By the dawn's early light. Jean-Claude... I don't want to talk about Don in the speech. It's okay. I think you're confused. Yeah, hanging around Joe just really fucked you up. All right. I'm going to do this my way. All right. I got this far. Okay. America. And Willie. <laughs> Because it is time to unburden what has been. <laughs> <laughs> so 
She's got the laugh down. But it ain't funny. It's funny. But this is what we're dealing with in real life. This is what we're dealing with in real life. Stop buying into the bullshit, people. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. So I promised you early on at the beginning of the show before we got knocked off and all that, and I thank all of you for hanging in there. Please watch, share, all that stuff. Talk about that in a minute. But I have this one video that kind of is very educational in a lot of ways because most people just don't know, and I don't blame you for not knowing because who wants to pay attention to this crap? You want to think that like everybody is doing things in your best interest, which is the farthest, unfortunately, from the truth. I'm doing this in your best interest. Whether you like it or not, sometimes it hurts. It hurts me too. But the nonsense. This guy's going to talk to you about being a Democrat, which I was. And he's going to tell you things about things you may not know. And I, I, I'm i pretty much guaranteeing you don't know this. But um, after this, I may take a five-minute, like, either you call in or you don't. And more than likely, nobody will. But then we'll go. But check this out. This is really important. I want you to watch this. It's a couple of minutes long. Really important to really tell it like it is and what it is in not a really bad way. It's just common sense, all right? Well, check this guy out. I've got a question. How do we go from this? And if I'm elected, I'm going to restore Roe v. Wade. To this? I am President of the United States. I will sign into law the protections for reproductive freedom. If you're voting Democrat and Kamala Harris based on that lie she just said, you are an uneducated voter. Did you know that the 10th Amendment states that government can't interfere with state government the supreme court made a ruling that's it that is it there's nothing biden can do there's nothing that kamala harris can do to change that it's done now what you need to think about if you're a democrat that was going to vote biden now kamala harris is ask yourself this serious question why did they not codify Roe versus Wade before the Supreme Court overturned it? Biden ran on protecting Roe versus Wade back in 2020. He's talking about if I'm elected again, I'll pass, you know, you're not going to do any shit, old man. Barack Obama, who I voted for, two term president, he too, both times, ran on protecting Roe versus Wade. Didn't do it. And I'll say this, since I did vote for him in 2008. Democrats had the White House, the House, and the Senate, all three at one time. Republicans could not have done a thing to stop it. That's how Obamacare got passed. They didn't do it. Now, I'm old enough to remember Bill Clinton, another two-term Democrat president. He also both campaigns ran on protecting abortion rights. He didn't do anything either. Neither did the Democrats then. See, the reason why they don't do it is because they don't want it protected any more than Republicans do. Because if it got protected, they would not have a talking point that was so sensitive. And that people have strong feelings about either way of this coin. It's just like cancer. Big Pharma is not going to cure cancer because if they did, their customers would stop. I'm a two-time bone cancer survivor. I know damn well, after seeing the costs of it, the stuff just to keep me alive, they would never sell a cure. You codify Roe versus Wade, you no longer have a talking point that is such a hot topic with people. And then the only thing they would have to talk about is race. That's literally the two things that Democrats talk about anyway. 
if you think for a second that Kamala Harris is going to protect abortion and get it back to a federal thing, you are sadly mistaken and super uninformed. There's a reason why no Democrat before her or Biden or Obama or Clinton, I even went back as far as Jimmy Carter and he was talking about protecting women's reproductive rights. It's been a talking point forever, yet they never have done anything. When they start talking about protecting women's rights, the bullshit meter should go off in your head. And how do I know this? Well, I was a former Democrat and I've seen it enough times. It comes up every election cycle and nothing ever gets done, even when Democrats win. Actions speak louder than words. They all say it, they never do it. What's funny is if you were in a relationship or married to somebody and they, they were doing the opposite of what they were saying, you wouldn't stick around. You would divorce them, leave, find somebody else. It might be time for you to find somebody else. Actions speak louder than words. The problem is they make all these promises. Time goes by. There's so much other bullshit compounded on top of everything. You completely forget about it. And then election time rolls around again and they go, we're going to fix this. We're going to fix it. JB Corn Pop has been promising to fix this and fix that. And he even said it in his departure speech, which is the biggest bunch of baloney. He's going to cure cancer. <laughs> okay. 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 Actions speak louder than words. I'm leaving this up for five minutes. 818-259-7983. If you have something to say of worth, whether you agree or disagree with me, I'm going to take that call. I doubt anybody will call because I just know the way it works. But I'm going to do that. One of these days, I'm just going to have a show that I'm not going to say a word unless the phone rings. And then we'll start doing this again like we used to. But right now, I just, you know, especially since I had, you know, I had finally one opposing opinion from Janice that was uh, uh, up there earlier today. And uh, where was she? She's, she's you know, obviously a uh, who cares what changing your mind, you know, hey, you know, nothing's going to stop Kamala Harris from being president. It's like, okay, I'm listening. If you're still listening, Janice, you can call me right now at 818-259-7983. I'd love to talk to you. I really would. I'm not going to argue with you. I just want to talk to you. I want to know. Want I want to see what, want to hear what makes you tick why you're so passionate about this, why you believe that that empty molecule is going to be presidential material other than they want her there to be a puppet. I just want to know. I mean that lovingly. 818-259-7983. I will gladly take your phone call. I swear. I... Uh, It's, it's important to me. It's very important to me. Let me make sure that I have everything right because I do not I do not want to miss the one if I get the call. Um, oh, that's right. I'm looking at the wrong thing, aren't I? Focus. Okay, I think we're good. So if the phone should ring, but if it doesn't, I want to just tell you, please, 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 don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Peter G Show. I need all the help I can get over there because they're working really hard to keep me throttled down, to keep me strapped down so I can't be seen. Facebook, follow on Facebook, follow on Instagram, follow on TikTok, follow on LinkedIn. I love them all, but they're really tough, especially even TikTok too. They just, they, you know, you got to play favorites and I'm not that kind of a guy. But don't forget, I appreciate you watching the show, but if you can't watch the show, at least listen to it while you're on the go. Just Google Peter G Show uh, podcast and it'll come up in the audio version. You have a bunch of different choices on how and where you want to listen to the show. Again, it takes a lot of dedication to spend this much time to watch little old me, but I try to deliver you something of worth. Whether you think so or not, it is definitely up to you. 
I'm sure there's plenty of people that beg to differ, but I try. Hi, my name is Peter. Don't forget we're here every Wednesday, like clockwork, almost. God willing, tomorrow I have a big phone call to make with the broad. We made it the rest of the show, which I, I'm very grateful, but doesn't mean that they're going to get off easy because they screwed up the whole front of the show again. So, and, uh, if they, and, and again, maybe next week I'm going to expose who this corporation is that is delivering me this crap for two months, eight shows. Two months. It's not about the money I pay them for this. It's the principle of it. This is not rocket scientists, you know, needed to, to make this work. It's just business. It's a job. This is what they provide. Broadband access. And when it doesn't get provided, there's a problem, especially if you pay for it. And it isn't about the money. I get pissed off when I put in this time and can't deliver it to you, whether you like it or not. That's for you to choose after I do the show. But anyway, I will see you here next week. All right, 818, last chance. If you want to bitch me, I guess Janet went away. She couldn't stomach it anymore. I'm too much for her, which I don't understand because I love her. I just think that she, you know, just needs a little more time to understand. But that's how it works. 818-259-7983 is the phone number. Last chance. I'll give you 60 seconds. Otherwise, we're out of here. I really would love to hear from somebody who either agrees or disagrees, but that's normally how it works. The ones who agree, agree, and the ones who disagree, they want to bitch me out, and they probably will in comments in the future of the week, but they won't talk to me in person on the phone. And that's not really even in person. But anyway, life is good. I am very thankful. I... I I want everyone to remember life is a bitch. I do. I don't take it for granted. I'm grateful for every day. Believe me, there's a lot of bumps in the road. A lot. One more time. Been one of those nights. Woo. Smooth. Deep breaths. That's what I do. Either way, be kind. Life is a bitch. A lot of people out there that have things going on in their lives that you may not realize. Last chance. Bye-bye. 818-259-7983. No call, no talk. Next week, maybe I'll just do nothing but wait for a phone call. Could be a very boring show. Then again, you never know. Sometimes you got to light a fire under people's asses before they move, which I thought I'd do with my cable provider, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Not enough. I guess I need to start, you know, just being erratic and screaming, being. Anyway, I will by tomorrow. I love you guys. Life is a bitch. You don't have to take a bunch of shit from people. You don't. But don't be an ass. But don't take a bunch of shit from people because don't be a punching bag. Life is very short. I, I have a lot of people I talk to and talk about and they're reminding me of memories from our past and stuff. And I, I remember a lot of stuff and some stuff I just do not remember. And it wasn't from being like really messed up or anything like that at party. And it's just, I don't know. I guess the brain can only retain what it retains. But I treasure all those moments. Even if, even if I have to be reminded some, sometimes it, it comes to me as like, oh, yeah, okay. But life is short, man. Enjoy. All right? I love you all. Thank you for watching. Life with Peter G. The Peter G. Show. Every Wednesday, like clockwork. God willing. No doubt. This boy has a lot of faith. I just don't go walking around screaming at people. But I will mention it. I do believe. 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. on the East Coast. I love you. Thank you for sticking with me. Share, share, share. That's what I need. If you believe in me, share, share, share. All right? That's what's most important than anything else because spread the word. I don't spend a lot, you know, a lot of time on advertising and this and that. It's either we're going to do it because people want it or we just, we don't. All right? I love you. My name is Peter G. I love you guys. And... Peace out.
Peter G. Show, Peter G. Show, Divorce Dad, Single Dad, Divorce Dad, Single Dad, Peter G. Show.